and I will share the video later once we finish and it will upload and then you can watch that on uh, YouTube uh, if you want to so and uh, today will be just a very concise introduction to using Google Sending and also the Python API basically GMAP uh, the one that I started developing uh, three years ago uh, after the pandemic and as team earlier uh, show in the slides about the length, uh, length set next right so it'll be 10 meter resolution compared to 30 what we have right now and three by three you could get nine times and also uh, twice of the spectrum uh, spectral band so it'll be 18 roughly 24 increase so think about one length set eight or nine thing like right now is one gigabyte compressed and you'll be tw uh, 20 gigabyte when length set next comes out like for one thing and you have seven years to prepare yourself for that. Yeah. So traditionally, if you have been using desktop computing, trying to download imagery, trying to do that, it's still okay for now, but probably it will not be okay in seven years. So now is a good time to start thinking about how to prepare yourself uh, for the next generation geospatial uh, processing. And I would always would like to start with an analogy, like what have you been doing, like what I'm trying to educate or trying to educate people how to use this is just like you have been watching v movies using a DVD. You're trying to buy the DVD, you go to the store and then load it out into your DVD room and then watch a movie. What I'm going to talk about today is to teach you how to watch movie using Netflix. And it's, right now it's very intuitive, but still in geospatial, it's not there. A lot of people are still using it all way. And you're not going to be ready when you're dealing with 20 gigabytes just for one thing. And if you're doing time series, you're going to see hundreds and hundreds of gigabytes. So uh, you will not have the hardware to do that. So we need definitely cloud computing. But today I'm just going to introduce uh, G, uh, Google Sending, but there are other options, uh, plenty of computer and also AWS. And uh, I'm also working part-time for AWS. So uh, if you need anything specifically, so. If this one goes well next year, maybe we can try printed computer or AWS uh, just to introduce different options. Uh, the more important is the concept. Um, technically, uh, all the stuff are pretty much similar, um, the, the, the cloud computing, but once you have the concept, I mean, the mindset, uh, it's much easier to migrate from one platform to the other, okay? And again, if you cannot follow perfectly fine, you can rewatch the video, and if you have uh, questions I can help you after this so I'm going to have it set up so for today we just need a browser but you can install things on computer so all you need is just a browser and then all the processing will be in the cloud so just like you're watching Netflix movie or Amazon Prime or Disney Plus but basically there are multiple options out there but as long as you know one to how to use one it's pretty easy to use others so just to give you uh, that kind of analogy so again scan the QR code and then so I've sent out email uh, um, uh, yesterday asking you to like test it whether you are ready to use it or not. So Google is changing. You can just Google it. You should be able to create an account and, um, and apply. And then once you get approved, you can use that. So just a quick introduction. So Google is changing has two uh, APIs. And uh, let me show you where you can get to this uh, later. So this is basically a kind of a comparison. Uh, most of you basically get started using the JavaScript API, uh, but most of, but nowadays, most of the so-called data science programming languages, uh, JavaScript is not one of those. So Google, uh, Google Search Engine started uh, the Google Search Engine program, I think in 2010, so it's 12 years now. And at that time it was using JavaScript, but now it's still, it's probably the only uh, uh, cloud computing using the JavaScript language. So I prefer using Python. I'm like pure Python guy. So, and it's much easier, even though Python, you can use other cloud computing platform, pretty much they're all using Python. So I built on top of Google Sending to provide you tools that you can inter uh, interact with cloud computing is pretty easy. And uh, here I showed you the comparison. Uh, just a quick maybe survey, like how many of you have used it like Google Sending before, right? Log into that. Uh, maybe half how many of you use python api okay yeah like this number so you have never used that that's pretty fine so today you're going to get hands on like how you can actually use it how you can load the data how you can source the data how you can visualize the data and how you can analyze the data um so here's just a quick comparison um python is a lot more powerful and more flexible so the javascript api basically they have a lot of documentation but you are limited to the documentation limited to the editor interface you cannot really communicate with the computer 
So if you have some files on computer, you want to transform to cloud, it's not possible. Python allows you to do that a lot more flexible, and you can so integrate with QGIS, uh, ArcGIS Pro. So it's just a lot more uh, capability and functionality, and also have a lot of so-called IDE. Uh, for today, we're just going to use Google Colab Plus browser, but there are a lot of options. So basically, think about traditionally when you write papers, uh, you can use Microsoft Office, you can use Google Document, you can use Microsoft Online. So there are different tools available. Uh, but if you use JavaScript, you are just limited to that option, and you need to write a, uh, run the script from the beginning to the end. So it's not very convenient. Python allows you to run things interactively, so you can run one code one code block by one code block. So it's definitely a lot more flexible, and you can automate things. Uh, and if you have used the JavaScript API before, when you're trying to export data, let's say you want to export 100 images, you need to click the button 100 times. Later, each image is only like can export one. Python, one line of code, you can export 1,000 images, 10,000 doesn't matter. So it can help you automate. So you, I just wanted to help see some of the benefit of using uh, Python. So uh, Google Sending has basically um, these two APIs and so the Python API, you can think about the API as two components, doing computation and also doing visualization. So the JavaScript API can do both. Uh, you see here, this is the interface, the JavaScript API. You can write code uh, and center, you can visualize, you can do all kinds of interaction. The Python API doesn't have that. So you will see here, you can write code, you can do computation, but uh, Google Sending doesn't provide support for doing visualization interactively. So I can build on top of those and then provide some uh, based on mapping library. So now allows you to interact, uh, visualize the result very, very easily. So um, you can think about the Python API just like Netflix, right? So it has a bunch of movies. Uh, if you're using the JavaScript API, you can watch movies, you can do all kinds of stuff. But if you're using the Python API, it only shows you like it has a bunch of movies, but it doesn't give you the interface like how to actually watch the movie. So the Python API GMAT solved that problem. And it started like uh, 2020, right after the pandemic, uh, April or May. Uh, basically, just I, t I developed for my students, but I released on GitHub. People like it, and then I, I uh, continue to maintain it. So that's kind of a side story. And so we're going to get right into uh, the Google Collect environment. And you might be wondering, like, I'm OK. I really have, I'm going to prepare for LangSync next in, like, in seven years. I, and right now, I need to start using cloud computing. But this JavaScript API, this Python API, can I just start with Python API directly? Uh, the answer is yes, of course. With GMAP, you don't have to actually learn uh, JavaScript API. You can use Python directly, and you will be just fine. So uh, trust me. And uh, so next, I'm going to go directly into that. Uh, I'm just going to show you how you can get started. Again, if you don't have an account, you won't be able to actually run code interactively. Uh, if you already set up correctly, you can do that. So uh, it's perfectly fine. You can just uh, uh, watch and just see things in action. And then later on, you can just um, uh, go through that. So for today, it's very brief introduction. I have a uh, talk workshop from ranging from one hour to 30 hours. So this is really just semester a semester-long course that I can teach. But today, we'll just give you some flavor, what it looks like, how you can search the data, how you can visualize the data, how, it, how I can do some global analysis very quickly within a couple of seconds. And so what you need to do here, this is called Google Collab. Uh, if you click the link, you should be able to go to this page. And G, uh, Google is sending the Python package already pre-installed there, so you don't have to install anything. Uh, but you need to authenticate. Uh, it's just like, so Google is sending is free. Everyone can use it, but they need to figure out who is using it. And uh, don't let people abuse the system. So you basically need to authenticate. And it used to be very easy, but now you need to create a cloud project. It gets a bit complicated, but uh, don't be intimidated. I've been teaching this uh, for, to my students a couple of times, never run into any issues. Uh, the problem I think right now we're having is some, uh, some of you register the account using your uh, university address.edu, and now some university IT department do not allow students or faculty to create a project by yourself. So that's kind of the tricky part. And so sometimes I have to send a list of email to the IT and then they create a cloud project. Uh, creating the project itself is free. But uh, all the cloud has all other services, so it can incur charges. So the university doesn't want to pay like students like do some other things. But this one is totally free. So uh, um, if you're using a personal Gmail profit, then you can have full control. But if you, EDU, 
you might not be able to follow today. So, but I can help you how to get that um, after today. So, and as I said, it's very low barrier. All you need just need to know how to click the button. You are good to go. And so, if you click, for example, first one import e. So basically, let's say uh, Google is sending API Python package. And right now, if you import, uh, and then if you just run through this, so the next one authenticate. So this is the one that. If you're using Google Collab, you need to do that every time. Uh, but if you install on your local computer, it's only one time only. Um, since not all of you are, have used this before, I just want to use this one. Uh, but I can show you how to do that um, to, on your computer. So all you need is just click this link. And then it asks you to log into your account. So this is the part that I was mentioning. You need to choose a cloud project. Uh, in the past, it doesn't we have this requirement but now if enforce the requirements so you have to create a cloud project if you don't have one uh, uh just watch so i'm going to select for example based on the project so i can select whichever that uh the university created for me so i can maybe uh you see these are all the uh, uh project created for me for my students and let me see if you can select the one for myself yeah i'm just gonna use my uh, own projects and just select. Then, so all you need is just join the token. So what this is doing is basically, uh, you need to connect to your account. So traditionally you have to enter your username and password, um, but I don't want to show my username and password. So basically this is the authentication process and join the token and log into your account. Okay, so here, just click allow. And then all you need is just click this, uh, one time token and then just paste it back to uh, this and then control view enter so basically authenticate right now is uh, because this collab is like public so we are connecting this one to a Google saying the account now you are authorized then you can start using that so once you pass this step then click the next one initialize so basically uh, log into account now you can start doing something so this is each one is called a section so initialize if you can run through this three step, everything works fine, you are good to go. If it's some errors, I'm sorry, uh, you have to just watch and you can fix the problems later. But um, uh, hopefully if you need a break, I will can help you uh, with that. But uh, yeah. So how many of you can pass this step? I have a question. Okay, yeah, just go ahead. So how about you? Yeah, so that's what I was saying. They, uh, it's preferred to ask them to create another account using their personal email. If a university, if the university do not allow you to create a cloud project by yourself, then you need to send the email address to the IT and then they create a project for you. Because when they create a project, they can set a threshold that don't incur charges. Uh, otherwise, students can run something randomly and then can cost hundreds of bucks or thousands and the IT doesn't want to allow the student to do that. Oh, it doesn't matter. It can run anywhere. Ah, yeah. so this is it's just near the browser. So it doesn't have to be run on a university computer. The problem is the Google uh, uh, account. So how many of you can pass these steps? Okay, maybe uh, 60, 70%. percent. Okay, great. If you don't, that's fine. Uh, don't worry too much. So once you pass this step, then you are ready to go. So um, next, you just open this link here. Uh, the next one, the workshop notebooks. So it will look like look like this. So this is basically the notebook when it goes through. Again, it's just a bunch of source code, but uh, don't get intimidated. When I explain, you become much easier. And but uh, you don't really have to. If you already have some Python background, perfect. If you don't, um, don't worry too much. So this is basically the Gmap website. I have developed a lot of uh, uh, tutorials. So if you go on the left side here, I also have other workshop uh, since twenty twenty one. And so everything is reproducible. All you need is just to open a browser and then you can start running things through. I also have other notebook in here. So if you click the tutorials, uh, I have a YouTube channel. So I have developed over uh, 133 tutorials. So each tutorial is like a notebook. And then I also have a bunch of videos. I don't have time to do all of them, but uh, maybe 70, 80 uh, videos. It's one like 15 minutes. So uh, what we're going to do today is just a selection from some of those tutorials. If you want to learn more, you're welcome to check out that. Uh, everything, again, is reproducible. So you're able to see some of the features. And also on the left side here, if you click the books, uh, also um, writing a book. So basically, 
uh, I've developed so many tutorials, so uh, the uh, publisher reached out to me, see if I can write a book. I said, okay, like, let's try. So it took me a couple of months actually to uh, organize, but everything is open source, so it's all online. And what we are talking about today is just a subset. So I, I would say maybe uh, five to ten percent of the content. So it has a lot more on the website if you to learn more. And also, you're welcome to use this for your teaching. Uh, if you uh, all the teaching materials also on my GitHub. So you, if you want to uh, use the material, let me know. I'm more than happy to send whatever I have uh, for you, uh, labs, assignments, uh, quizzes, exam. And hopefully the book will be published uh, later this uh, spring. And uh, all the source code are published. Uh, so the text this is just the first chapter. And again, you're welcome to go through that uh, if you want to uh, learn, uh, learn more about it. And so every chapter you want to see an icon opening collab so this is basically you can think about just like google document and then you just open the google document and start writing that's it so the same idea for the coding part uh, for cloud computing so now let's go back to here uh to this notebook uh if you open the link here the second one and so this is the one we'll be using uh all we need again just open in collab then you should be ready to go so now we open this one you can start or syndicating and the first step you need to do is to install the package because uh, earlier I showed you uh, the G uh, the earth engine package Python package is already pre-installed uh, Gmap is not uh, Gmap is built on top of that and not every package is pre-installed you can think about the Windows operating system it comes with some pre-installed packages my package so-called the third party uh, Google doesn't adopt that in their uh, operating system so you have to install that Every time if you're using the Google Collab, but you can certainly install on your computer and then just one time. So uh, whatever works for you. So all you need, uh, if you select, for example, uh, go through this one and then you can select, uh, click the button on the left side, or you can just press uh, Control Enter. Uh, That's the keyboard shortcut. So I'm just going to run this one and then say run anyway. And this is basically installing the package into the cloud environment. So Google Collab is the, Free cloud computing environment for doing data science uh, using Python or you can do R and it's free and it, this is probably the configuration is better than your laptop uh, if you see hover your mouse somewhere uh, on the right here uh, it's, it's right now it's connecting so it basically uh, it's creating a virtual computer in the cloud and then now it's installing so you see up right here uh, the RAM is 12 gigabyte and also the uh, hard drive is 100 gigabyte so it's pretty decent uh, and just for temple it's good for training and for teaching so uh, if you have not used it i highly recommend uh, microsoft or google uh, aws also have similar one but this is the most uh, widely used one and so right now we're basically installing the gmap um, the, uh, the package and once you have that you see it's done it should not have any error message and if it is like overwhelming, you can clear the output. So I'm going to show you on the left side here. Uh, just clear the output, and then you're good to go. So the next step, same thing. We're going to import the library. So Python basically is all built on all the packages. So you need to import that. It's just like think about you're using Access Pro. Uh, in the past, you have to like activate the extension. Same idea. So it doesn't preload by default. So you're just going to import the library, and then. So now you just uh, do the same thing, initialize. So once you run this one, we're going to initialize. Then we can start using Google Sending. So again, do the same thing, generate the token, uh, uh, connect to your account, and then just hit allow. Sometimes the interface might be look different. It might ask you to like security or something, go back, but you need to check the two boxes. Uh, it might be, it might varies. But for me, it will just uh, click allow, and then copy here, come back, and then uh, here, paste, control V, enter. Uh, if there's no error message, then you're good to go. So this is basically authenticating uh, the Google Ascending, and then you can go to the next step. So I'm gonna show you here quickly, just run this one, and then run another one. If you can see the map, then this is where so-called the interactive map uh, is being generated, and then we're going to load a bunch of data. So how many of you can see the map now? Awesome, All right? So now you can create the so-called interactive map. This is where Gmap essentially is about. Um, if you have any issues, I'm sorry. Uh, you just watch, and I can uh, help you fix it later. 
So it's pretty simple, right? So gmap.map, basically we are creating an interactive map. And then you just type map, we are displaying the map. So everything is right now living in the cloud. And this is not Google Sensing yet. It's just a simple web application. And then I can scroll down. I can run another one here. It should be pretty easy to understand, right? Map, center, and then the uh, square brackets, uh, latitude and longitude. So by default, it's going to create a map at a global scale. So it looks like that. But if you, are, if you want to start a map center around somewhere, all you need is just to provide a latitude and longitude. And then the zoom level basically um, zoom out or zoom in. So this is so-called zoom level four. You can also set the height of the map. And pretty simple. So now, uh, for example, if you want to center around somewhere location, you just find the coordinates. That's it. So all you need, for example, uh, if you have no idea about the coordinates of a certain city, you can... Uh, if you want on the left side here, there's a button that you can do the search. So you can search by any location. Uh, so I can say L A F A Y E T T E. Right? You can you can search, you can quickly find the location, for example. So this is allow you to uh, find the location. And then so I'm gonna select here. Uh, there's actually a lot of Lafayette uh, cities around the US. Uh, and so now you see here the location. So I can now I can zoom in. Um, so you can continue zooming, right? And this is where, if you want to find out the coordinates, it's actually pretty easy. So on the lower left side here, uh, you should have the uh, the major icon here. You just click, uh, click here, and then I can just simply move my mouse here. You click, you should be able to see uh, the coordinates. So you can see the latitude and longitude. So this is where, if you have, want to figure out, it's pretty easy. So you, all you need is just simply uh, Control C, and then I can come back to the map here. Now I just simply replace this one. Uh, Control V, uh, you might need to uh, backscape a little bit, and then replace the uh, forward slash with comma, then you're good to go. So you probably you need to change the zoom level. And right now, if you have no idea about what the zoom level, I can click here, uh, upper part here, create new core block. So you can actually figure out what the zoom level of the map. So you'll be uh, map dot zoom and then just press control enter see that so this is zoom level number 10 so and this is where you can go back to customize uh, so zoom level 10 and then control enter again boom right so now the map center around the location that you select so this is pretty easy create a map center at a certain location because if you're not doing global study when you create a map you want to some do something like this okay Question? No, right now it's not it's nothing to do with Google Engine. Right now it's just simple web map and then connecting to some web services. It's just like base map, so it's not Google Sync yet. Yeah. And so the next, I'm going to switch to my local. Uh, this is probably better. So I'm going to, because they, if you're running on Google Collab, uh, this full screen button, it doesn't work. Okay, so you cannot full screen. So if I'm running on my, uh, this is I install on my local computer. So it's the same thing. I'm just going to use uh, this from now on. But you should get the same ex, uh, user experiences using the Google Collab. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Run this one. And then create a map. Okay. So it's pretty intuitive. And then you can change location. You can change the latitude, longitude. Uh, you can also customize the, uh, the, the, the control. So earlier, if you see on the left side here, uh, I have some like zoom, zoom control, full screen, zoom control, and also the toolbar you see on the left side. So uh, if you're running on locally, if I hover my mouse, you will show it up. But on Google Collab, you have to click it. Uh, otherwise, you will not come up. So on the right here, also have a bunch of toolbars in here. So this is essentially what Gmap is about. It's some interactive tools allow you to interact with the data so that you don't have to do uh, coding. And... So if you can customize, you can highlight if you want. Uh, pretty simple. And so next, uh, you can add some base map. So by default, you're using the Google map, but you can use Google satellite. You can use a bunch of uh, different base maps. So it's pretty simple. You can just, uh, when you create a map, you can provide the so-called base, uh, base map argument. So you can show like hybrid, satellite, uh, all kind of base map. You can use, uh, for example, open topo map uh, like this. So pretty easy to use. And right now, uh, Gmap Integrate has over uh, 405 base map, so it's a lot of base map that you can utilize. 
and if you want you can just show the first hand right so you can do the coding again if it looks very intimidating uh this way i now show you here if you click your icon and then you show this one here uh third row third column change base map if you click and you can access all the base map directly in here so 405 base map it's not google changing yet uh but you're welcome to try out any base map you like for example i want the uh uh nfcd like uh base map like you load it in uh, directly i can try for example uh the european space Agency global land cover uh you should be able to load it instantly so these are just the base map just like you are using google map like browser is the same thing you cannot use the data for any analysis this is just the base map so not for analysis i will show you how to do that later and for example you can you can change to whatever you like again uh it's oops need to I'm using a Mac computer, but I don't use Mac. Uh, oops. Uh, okay, I'm get back here. And again, you're welcome to change the base map to whatever. For example, there also a lot of uh, Azure base map. For example, you can change to whatever you like. Okay. So in that way, you don't have to worry about how to add the base map. And this is a simply uh loading the base map so next let's get into google changing i'm going to skip this skip these two parts um you can basically if you have any web services on the internet you can put the data in and then show on the map as a base map and so next let's go directly to google changing and this is where the power of cloud computing uh so google changing right now has over um uh 880 petabyte 80 petabyte so eighty thousand terabyte of data and right now you can use this to access to any data so you can just think about there are tons of data in there all you need is to find out how to access to the data and so each data set has a unique id and in google sensing so there are different data types so image just simple just a one image file you can think about one length set scene image collection basically a bunch of images so you can time series images just like all the images belong to length set 9 surface reflectance or top of the image here so basically those this the so-called one data set but one data set can contain millions of images in there so it's just eventually just a folder on your computer with a bunch of images but it's in the cloud and it also have geometry feature feature collection so just think about feature collection is just a swap file and then within a swap file you might have multiple records right so each row is one feature and each feature is going to have geometry and attributes so geometry is just the shape so it's very similar to traditional vector data so you just get an idea we don't have time to get into the detail about every uh uh uh, uh, uh data type but at least you have the really, like corresponding to the traditional uh files on your computer now this is where we get into google sending so google sending is so-called cloud computing cloud server side object so everything is living in the cloud and think about here they are 80 petabyte data how do i know like where the data where to, how do i actually connect point to that data so each data set each image each file has a unique id think about a social security number to each of us it's just a unique id so if you want to access data you need to know the id so here everything pretty much in google saying is either ee doc image or ee doc image collection or ee doc feature collection so basically within there this is basically the unique id and uh the first you might have a slash in there so you might be the provider and then the name so if you really want to like figure out like where it is you can just go to google sending i can show you like where you find the data so for example i'm going to google sending and then if i click the data set right this is where the so-called 80 petabyte data is hosted so i can scroll down for example let's say i'm interested in uh, getting the length set image so i'm going to click the button explore and you see here we right now we're using collection tool right so i'm going to click length set 9 and right it's just like hierarchy so surface reflectance and look at this one so this is the social security number to like collection to lengthen nice nice surface re reflectance within there you are going to have millions of images within this one and each me image going to also have a unique id so just think about here and let me go back to this one so assume that this is i will show you how to get the id later for now assume that you know the social security number to this uh srtm and so all we need is the e image 
uh, parentheses and then the unique ID. Now you have pointer to the image. Once you have that pointer to the image, you can show all the information, the metadata associated with the image. So now if I just run this one, uh, take a look. So bottom here is going to show you, okay, this image, and then you can see the image, ID, version, how many bands in there, uh, what's the properties, and you can have a bunch of information. So this is essentially you download a lens image, and then it has a metadata file, you open it, take a look at the information, you can do the same thing in here. So all the images ingested into the Google Earth Engine data catalog, we come with those metadata. So this is how quickly you can access to the metadata. Uh, and you're welcome to, for example, look at, for example, the spatial resolution, the provider, uh, where the URL, so it has tons of information in there. So next, uh, this is where it's really cloud computing, uh, data visualization. So think about here, this code block, pretty simple and straightforward. I'm going to create a map, and I'm going to send it at this location, zoom level three. I'm going to point to the image, and this is how I'm going to visualize the image. Uh, it's just basically Python uh, script. So this is essentially just like in ArcGIS, you have the image on a computer, you open it, you're going to change the symbology. Minimum, maximum, and also change the color, right? The same idea. Google Sending doesn't have the interface. You will have to do the coding. I will show you how to actually use the interface later, but this is uh, pretty simple. So you just execute, take a look. Now you load the data into the, the map and pay attention. This is different from the base map. Base map you cannot use for analysis. This one, you are really having the power. You have full control. If I point to the data, you can say, I'm going to clip. I want to do some statistics. You can do anything. So this is really right now you have full control. So think about here. This DM might be several gigabytes. The 30 meter resolution DM, a DM. If you're trying to download the local computer, take some time, load it up. You need to have hardware. But now, just like one click, you have access to the data. I can do analysis. I can change the visualization. I can do... A bunch of things i want so again this is just one single image um and then if you really want to change the visualization fine i can come back to here so gmap looks it pretty easy uh this is so-called the palette basically the color call just like in access pro you can change the symbology but um, nobody can really remember this but i can simply remove that and then just train uh take a look you can there's a bunch of names so you can just change that you can do the visualization so it's in real time so think about the data is in the cloud i'm just asking okay i want to visualize in this way just show it to me you can do it right away okay now you see the power right this is cloud computing and if you if you can access to the data you can visualize the data so next i'm going to show you even a better way so if you hover your mouse to this and then on the left side here you should see the uh the, like the hamburger icon the layers if you click this one, uh, it's going to show you all the data layer. So this is just like the uh, table of content within ArcGIS Pro. So take a look at this. Pretty nice, right? Interactive. And this is what some of the functionality about GMAP. Uh, you can, you're welcome to uh, turn the layer on and off, right? Pretty easy. And you might notice another settings icon there. Uh, right now, for example, I don't like the column. I want to change something else. Fine. When you click that. You should see the color bar here, the minimum, the maximum, and then on the right here, color map. This is where you can have control. Just like Access Pro, select the symbology. I want to change something else. You can do that here. So I'm going to select, for example, you can do whatever color you like. I can maybe, uh, I don't know what is this. And then just hit apply. You see, you're going to change it. Uh, I'm going. Yeah. Right, okay, so let me here show you here one more time. Close here. And then the same with icon, this layer here. See that? Can you see this one? And then the settings icon here, the gear icon. And then click this one, it should pull up. Yes? Any issue? And then you just select, for example, color map, whatever color map you like. Uh, so uh, whatever you like. And select this one, and then hit apply. All right. So this is pretty simple. And you can change the minimum, maximum. So by default, it's only like a zero to six thousand for example um probably let me change to another one this one looks pretty dark so i can go back to maybe terrain and then hit apply right so you can see the low right corner here this is basically the uh the color bar so i can change it for example uh if we if we have a create map you know like setting the minimum and the maximum so i maybe i slow make it a little bit lower uh five eight four thousand maybe a little bit this 
basically you can customize so anything lower than this threshold will be uh, the color on the left side anything greater than that will be the color on the right side so this is allow you to to customize to whatever you want if you want to if you want the precise number you can double click here you can enter a number so i can enter five thousand and then hit enter on the left side i can enter maybe uh 100 whatever and then hit enter and then apply so there are also some other options in here um i don't have time to get into detail but you get the idea basically you have the same user interface just like access pro once you load the data i can analyze it i can do whatever you want i don't have to download the data the data is still sick in the cloud i'm just pulling the data layer from them and telling google saying i want to visualize this way minimum maximum the visualization so uh, the interface just for people that don't know how to code or don't enjoy coding but every button you click behind the scene there's source code to execute what you um, click yes i'll show you later yeah you you can do that so it's very easy to customize and once right now if you close it uh the laser will be gone but i will show you how to create a laser now later right so this is how you access to one data set pretty simple and it doesn't matter how big is the data set one gigabyte one terabyte doesn't matter it's the same the same procedure uh get the imagery create a map get the image id how you want to visualize that add the data layer display the map that's it so also things follow the same procedure and next one uh is also called the image collection um so here for example the uh sentinel 2 right it has the image id i intentionally put sentinel 2 here so you can do exercise using length set 9 right the same idea it doesn't matter what id so this is the unique id to the image and then you can just run this one so now think about here you have access to the entire sentinel 2 image collection uh, i i assume there will be millions of images in there and so now i can just think about here so if you run this code block and let me explain a little bit and take a look at how far uh, it's not coming up yet but it should come up pretty shortly so think about what this one is doing here i'm creating a map i'm going to point into the entire sentinel 2 image collection and i'm going to take the so-called median composite and basically i'm creating a, uh, one image out of these millions of images median basically means think about here each location has tons of time series i'm taking a medium basically because you might have a lot of cloud and cloud usually have the high reflectance high dm values so medium probably somewhere in the middle it's not too dark it's not too bright so this is where you create a so-called cloud-free mosaic and you think about the power this has petabyte data in there and just one line i create a cloud right now it's still a little bit like uh, not very good but we can refine it but you get the idea and once i have the image i can specify how i'm going to visualize that what specs of bang i'm going to visualize that and then you can set the map center and then just add the data layer and that's it so now you have this it's global scale so if you zoom out it's going to generate so you see it's pretty slow when you zoom up to other location so why google saying is so powerful so fast because it doesn't compute at the native resolution so let sentinel 2 is 10 meter it doesn't down it access to 10 meters so it depends on the map zoom level and it depends on the region so in this case this might be only like two kilometer resolution is resampling so this is why it's really fast and resampling and then it send the request to tens of thousands server and then each one process one piece one piece and then you send back the result and then you present the result on the map okay this is uh the differences between traditional computing and cloud computing because cloud uh nowadays don't use the native resolution because we just don't need it right now if you're just showing on the map uh, it takes some time because again this is probably petabyte data in there thousands of terabytes it's going to take some time to load up and earlier it's very quick because google saying it also cache the result so if you already run the script it's going to pull the result from the case so it doesn't have to read one again but again you get cloud free and this is how you join the cloud free imagery just one line of code and as you can see it's not very good because it takes the median but it also has a bunch of cloudy things i can refine just adding one more line of code in here so this line basically shows you okay uh give me the like, sentinel 2 imagery and i want the data for 2021 i want to filter the data to with the cloud percentage less than five percent so basically you're getting all the good quality images and then do the same thing here create a median 
and show me the data and you can quickly see how good it is so now you see it improves dramatically again global scale can meter resolution right so think about if you're trying to create a cloud free image for your study area how long does it take you to download data from usgs <laughs> and how long does it take you to process and how much data storage you need now just a browser just one code block you get it done and the more interesting thing is that right now you're using the uh, uh true color but i can do any color combination so do the same thing how about this one click here and click the same gear icon like same just like object you can change the bank combination so they say okay i want the first color composite so it'd be b8 uh b4 uh, b3 hit apply take a look right so it's pretty powerful and it's very easy to use again once you load the data set you can change the combination it's like not really like difficult to understand right if you use imagery this is very intuitive if you ever use access pro and the other stuff it's the same pretty much the same user experiences so this is where gmap is about have those interactive to allow you to visit the data the google ascending api itself doesn't have this capability right so now you can access to like image image collection so next let's quickly go through this one here is the feature collection so vector data so google ascending also has vector data and the same idea is e doc feature collection and then the unique id so this is the tiger data set 2016 rose data set it also has state county all kind of census data also available so again you think about this is vector data this one is many many gigabyte you don't have to download data anymore i just point into the collection and then i just add the data layer and you see you can zoom in it's pretty detailed so you have all the raw network for the entire us within your fingertips just basically couple lines go and then you can change the combination you can change how you're going to visualize that we don't have time to get into the detail but i just want to show you how you can quickly um get the data you want and then you can filter the data down it can get to your uh, resource area uh, it's pretty easy to use so that one is for the national level but how about this right they say i'm doing research in louisiana i just want to filter the data in louisiana pretty simple so this data set here is global scale and i can just do the filter and then just select this is similar to access pro select by attribute so i'm going to select double click your column and then your value like name equal to louisiana and then you get a subset of the data and then i can add to it pretty simple this is just like filter the data you will have to do the coding but um the workflow is pretty much the same and then um once you have that uh you can look into the attribute table so again access a uh, python api doesn't have like intact tools like access pro you can open the attribute table you can select and you have to do the coding so in here what you can do is just because this one you select a subset is still a swap file think about this is a swap file do it now but it only has one row one record and since it's a physical collection you have to select for example i want to look at the first row basically look at louisiana and then you can just turn that one to a dictionary so if you see here this is where you look at the attribute table of the the, the feature and uh, you can also do multiple for example i want to select all the all the states uh in the west coast for example and you do the same thing uh feature collection uh e dot filter dot english basically means okay the name if the name is within these three states i'm going to select them this is where you can get uh all the states uh pretty easy right and you can also do something interactively so uh let me go back to here okay just to show you uh more interactive tools if you want so oops and i'm going to move my mouse here assume that okay right now i'm interested in doing uh coastal studies in the southeastern united states uh, i want to select all the states if you have a bunch of those it might be very inconvenient so what you can do i can just on the uh drawing tools in here i can click this one and they say okay i just roughly select all the states in here just draw a rectangle or polygon whatever you like and then again here just in uh execute this code block and let me explain what does this is doing right so now select all the states within here so what this one is doing is that i'm going to get the map user ROI, basically whatever you draw on the map and then i'm going to intersect so filter bounds basically like 
ArcGIS select by location. So I have the entire US. I want to select what's intersecting with your ROI. Get the subset display on the map, right? So as simple as it is. And this is how you can uh, visualize the data. I can clear this one out. Okay. And besides this, uh, oops. Uh, Gmail also has tools how to interact. So you can on the div here, click this one. You can click, for example, the inspector icon. So this is similar to ArcGIS Pro like identifier. I want to see, click the, the pixel or click something and then I'll see what's in there. You can have your mouse to here. And then you can just open the attribute. And so take a look here. You're going to be able to see all the attributes. So it's not as nice as the uh, attribute table in ArcGIS Pro, but you get the idea. At least you can see all the column values if you want. So this is, again, all the data still in the cloud. What this one actually is doing, Gmap is when you click your mouse, it's great, going to get your coordinates, and you're going to send the coordinate to Google Sync Server and do the computation, and then return the result and then show it on the map. So you need to have internet connection, otherwise it doesn't work. Okay, so just like you're watching Netflix movie, and you know, without internet, you, you won't be able to watch anything. Okay, so this is how you can filter vector data, and um, I'm going to skip some of those. Uh, you can do some customization uh, if you want, but by default, it was just a, a black color, but uh, you can control whatever you, where you like. So all you need is just passing. I want the color. I want the width, basically the line width, and where, how you want to filter the color. So it's pretty flexible. You just need to know the color code. So the hex color code is from, uh, uh, this is uh, hex color code 16 um, um, uh, the digits. So RGB, so you think about here, I have eight characters in here, the color. So RGB and the last two is the opacity. So uh, zero, zero means it's going to be uh, zero, 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 FF means uh, no red, no blue, uh, uh, no red, no green, only blue. So that's why you see the blue outline. And the last one FF means it's like fully opaque. So it's like um, sickness. So here, for example, I want to change to maybe something like green color, you'll be zero zero right ff zero zero so red green and blue so the first two digits is red second i just want to run oops ah oh, yeah uppercase so you need to be oh ff interesting let me see here uh yeah that's good to know there's some bugs in here let me remove this one uh it's supposed to work sometimes i uh, make some changes to the anyway i'll look into that later i can fix that then this is the nice thing about if i run into issues i know what's the problem i can fix it right away and then release a new version uh if you're using every product if you crash good luck you did wait for them to fix that for you but if you report to me Probably within 24 hours, you get things fixed, sometimes 10 minutes, okay? And again, you're going to run into issues. Uh, it's not perfect. I did 99% of the coding, but uh, if you find any bugs, I can improve it. So this is how I mean so-called open source, like people can contribute and then report bugs. Uh, anyway, um, let's uh, get to the next one here, right? You can also change all kind of color. Uh, we don't have time to get into detail, but I just want to show you that you can do all kind of visualization, just like in desktop computing. Uh, you can change the color, but you just need to know how to do it. And I provide a lot of code example in here. All you need is just to make some modification. You will get the symbols you like, and everything's interactive, not like uh, uh, fixed. Okay, so that's about, uh, that's pretty much about the visualizing data. So next, uh, this is where it's also very useful. Basically, I'm going to teach you how to search movies on Netflix. And this is teach you how to search the 80 petabyte data just using a couple keywords without having to go everywhere trying to find out where do I get Langston data, Sentinel data, do I have an account, or where do I download this that data. Try this one first. You might already have the data in there. So uh, first, let me, uh, let me create a new map. So just to show you what it looks like. So I'm going to map equal to gmap.map and then display the map so take a look at it here now it's just an empty map uh pretty boring and the left side here uh this is where the power like source movie so if you go to the data 
uh, you might see the uh, not very really aligned very well. Sometimes the computer screen doesn't fit well. And this is where you find all the data. So you can find, for example, I, they say, I want lens set data. Just type lens set, just like you're searching a movie. And then boom. So this is all the entire data catalog within the Google search engine. So basically you can search whatever movie. You can go on and on, like hundreds of data sets derived from lens set. Uh, and it's a lot, right? Lens set four, five, eight, nine, uh, all the derived products, right? You don't have to go online. You just look at it, and I can select anyone. For example, I can let's say lens it eight, uh, whatever. If you click this one, it's going to show you here, right? The most important thing is the ID, the image collection. You get the social security number to that collection. That's it. And then you can do the same thing, just like what I showed you earlier. You can visualize it. You can do computation. You can show it on the map. That's it. Pretty simple and straightforward. And there's a button here, import. If you click the import, it's going to show you all the sample code. So all you need is just copy and then paste to a new code block. You will see the data set. You will run it anyway. So let me show you, for example, another one here. Maybe let's say I want to use some elevation data. And you have no idea, right? Uh, what's the best available DM right now at a global scale, right? Just easy, uh, elevation. And now you see a bunch of data set in here, right? Again, like tons of data DM in here. And we can pick whatever you want. So let me see. I want the, uh, how about this? The SRTM, this one probably is 90 meter. So how about this one? NASA SRTM, digital elevation, like 30 meter. You can see the date. You can see the ID. You can click the link. You can see the description in here. And this is where there's like useful. Click the import button. And now you have this code block. So all you need to do, uh, you don't have to select the uh, hashtag. That one's just the comment. So I can just in here and then control C. All right. Once you click control C, now I have the script and I can click the button here, the plus sign. And it create, create a new code block beneath. And then control V. Take a look. Now you have the sample code and I can just run it. Take a look. See here. You have the data set right away. Loading into your computer. So uh, it the color doesn't look good, but you can customize. This that's not the point. The point is that now I can stream the data from the cloud to my computer. Essentially, you search the movie, you select the movie you want, you watch it. Uh, the same same thing in here, right? And you can do any data set you like, pretty much. Uh, so eighty petabyte data you can access like this way. You don't have to go online to search to download anymore. And this is the power of cloud computer. The next generation. Uh, next, next, next is coming up. I'm sure Google is saying if it still exists at that time, you will pull the data and 20 gigabytes, one thing or 200 gigabytes, doesn't matter. One second, you get the data. No download anymore. Okay. So this is how you can search the data. Again, you can search type any keyword you like, wire fire, elevation, temperature, anything. You will be able to get access to those data. And once you have access, you can do all kind of visualization. Okay, so the simple is that, uh, uh, and also you can change the uh, color code again. Just like click the interface, you will be able to have access to that. Okay, so this about uh, searching the data. Next, um, if you already know what you want, there's also so called data set module. Let me quickly show you this one here. Uh, for example, this is the USDA uh, gap uh, length cover analysis. So the data set module basically allow you to see the list of data. Let me show you what it looks like. So if I remove this one and then dot, uh, uh, dot, and then if you hit tap on your keyboard, it's going to show you, yes? Uh -huh. uh, so you need to create a new code block. So let me come back to here, right? Uh, you just have your cursor on the map here. All right, make sure this is selected. And then you click this button, insert a new code block. It's going to join a new one here. And then you control V, paste it, and then run it. It's going to add the data layer to the map, previous map above. Right? <laughs> Get that? Okay. <laughs> Get that? Okay, so this is how you can uh, access the data set again. Uh, you don't have to do that. This is another way here. Uh, this is what I'm showing here. If you import this module, um, 
anyway if you're new to python uh just watch and you'll see the magic right data dot and then hit tap on your keyboard it's going to show you the list of all the data set so this is where if you know exactly like what's the name so sometimes just like okay you're trying to remember the social security number somebody you don't remember the full social security number but you remember the first two digits enough you can do it like this way so i know okay i'm going to lower the dm from the usgs on our side just that usgs right so now i have access to for example usgs and they say i want a one meter dm the three day program is already there i can do the 10 meter uh whatever you want i can select just this one hit enter you see now i'm pointing to the 10 meter dm just control enter okay uh looks really bad because by default it's going to uh, visualize from zero to one because most of the variation greater than one so that's why it looks like that but if you really want i can just put in here within the curly brackets and then you'll be uh minimum equal to zero and then maximum equal to uh maybe four thousand okay and then because this is a dm i'm going to type palette P A L E T T E, okay co uh, colon and then terrain uh, you don't have to try that i'm just showing you like how you can quickly visualize the data pretty i hope there's no typo or anything um uh, it's getting stuck so sometimes it might be like you are sending the request too frequently it might ask you to wait for a while but if something goes wrong if it doesn't work uh that's fine you can restart the kernel so sometimes you might get stuck so in this case it happens and if i'm using google collab it's do the same thing so i can just go to restart the kernel i can clear the output uh don't be scared it happens just like you are your computer is frozen you just reboot it uh that's totally fine so i'm going to go back but once you reboot it you need to re-import the library okay you need to re-authenticate uh you, you see it works and then i can move back to uh, this coding block and then i just going to run this one oops uh no you see it works all right now you get to the dm 10 meter resolution dm visualizing whatever way you want just visualize you can do analysis uh, we're not there yet but just showing you how you can access the data so now you have you know right basically we have finished 50 percent of the, the the workshop you know you know how to watch a movie uh, on netflix you are now how to visualize data in the google assessing data catalog uh 80 petabyte so uh, have fun find whatever data you want and then visualize uh next one here is so-called inspector i already showed you earlier so you can load a bunch of data for example here i load uh, a dm a lane set composite and also uh, vector data right so you have a bunch of data in here then i can turn the data layer on and off i can change the uh, opacity uh, if i want right it's pretty interactive and so if you want to inspect the pixel values just like the identifier in arcgs whatever right click this one and then hover your mouse click your mouse on the map you should be able to get uh, all the pixel values right when you click your mouse you're going to grab the pixel value for that location and then you can see from here you want to have also a bunch of project in uh, 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 uh this in here i can zoom in a little bit a uh, full screen so you can see all the detail right i can hover my mouse somewhere else uh, by default the, you can see the check boxes you only expand uh the raster but you want to expand the uh, vector data you can see the attribute and then i click my mouse in here uh, you're able to see all the vector data the attribute uh, all the information like uh, in a hierarchy all right so it doesn't look as good as desktop access pro but at least you can see some very quick results and this is not something the access uh not the uh, pi, google search engine python api of native have native support and this is what the feature about gmap that add these interactive tools allow you to quickly visualize the data interact with the data uh, so that you don't have to worry about uh do all kind of coding so i can return this one and the next one uh for those of who have never used google changing probably this is not going to interest you but if you have ever used the jaws api uh, this one i'm going to save you a bunch of time so assume that you have right written a bunch of javascript uh google changing javascript now you see that gmap is so attractive i want to move to like python then i can do automation conversion yes uh -huh. 
Yes, same thing. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, essentially, this is the one that I, uh, I forgot to mention, right? Uh, because I'm using Mac computer, I don't really have Access Pro here, but I can access the uh, the, uh, the the slides uh, uh, that I presented I gave uh, earlier. So it will be uh, in the notebook here at the beginning of the notebook. I think it's somewhere here. Uh, I forgot where it is. So if you go back to the uh, very beginning, uh, check out the slides in here. If you click, uh, it's open the slides, and then so this is where the Access Pro. Uh, I can show you like so. Um, Google Sensing has 80 petabytes all in the cloud. So I added a feature that allows you to use the data within Access Pro. So if you see here, uh, because Access Pro support uh, Jupyter Notebook, so on the right here is running a Jupyter Notebook. So you can run the code just like what we did earlier. All the data layer we pull onto the Access Map interface. So basically now you can use Access to access to Google Sensing. Uh, I don't have time to go straight because you have to do the installation. So this is more like a little bit more advanced. But if you really want to integrate this with desktop, uh, this will be something to go. So I, I, I released this one, I think, uh, last November, uh, November sometime. And then I just, uh, as we really interesting in this. So I reached out to me and work with me to develop more features for this because in this way, you are not limited to the Azure ecosystem. Now you have access to data outside the ecosystem, and it has more data than you can imagine, right? Google sending plenty to computer AWS. So in the future, my kind of envision is that users don't have to care about where the data being hosted. It can be anywhere. As long as they're using some standard cloud optimized GeoTIF or Spatial Temple S catalog, you don't have to know. So all you need is I want this data, and then you just set a pointer, and then you can pull the data in and everything within the cloud. So basically you have interoperability so that you can, basically, I don't care about where it's Netflix, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus. I just want to watch a movie. Just show me the movie, that's it. The same idea. So it's going this towards this direction. And um, again, if you want to just watch the video, I, I don't have time to show this today, uh, but you're welcome to check out the full video, how to install and how to, integrate this one uh, on your, on, on, into your uh, uh, yeah everything so everything i'm showing here you can run the same notebook within access pro yeah so you hit uh but the downside is that right now uh you can think about the data you're running all the computation the, the result are st still stored in the cloud you cannot use the data you cannot use the access image analysis tool to analyze the cloud you have to pull the data out but hopefully in the future you'll be you don't have to download data you can analyze so right now basically it's just for visualization so you run all the computation uh using the Jupyter notebook and then in the google engine cloud you get the result and display that on the map panel the reason i want to do that because it, sometimes you want to create a map based on your output uh google engine or gmap does not really have that professional design cartography so access is really good at that so you can, at least you can pull the data you can do the computation, get the result, and you can create a map. Then you can put into your publication or your project report. But hopefully in the future, you can support both computation and visualization. So but right now, this is more like the Azure side. They will need to support it. They will need to be able to post data uh, stored in the cloud. They have some of this already there, but it's not like fully compatible. So I'm also trying to provide some functionality. It makes it easier for you to put data uh, from multiple uh, cloud providers. Right now, I'm focusing on ArcGIS, plenty of computer, uh, but also AWS. Uh, but technically, it doesn't matter where it's hosted. As long as you're using cloud optimized GeoTIF, you can pull the data from anywhere. Just like you can have a server on your, on your, in your office, you can host some data, and as long as it's public accessible, you can pull the data from anywhere. And then so you can pull the data from your server, you can do the computation. Just like using object, uh, using a uh, Google, Google sensing. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, access right. You can, but again, there's still the data in the Azure ecosystem. You cannot use Google sensing to access the data you publish in the ArcGIS. But if they use some standard, for example, cloud optimization, you can, you, you can. So basically, it depends on the data format that you are sharing. 
Some of them can be accessible by multiple uh, desktop software cloud company. Some of them will not. But now the standard is called cloud optimized GOT. Basically means it's still the same GOT that you have been dealing with, uh, but it has some addition that allows you to do the streaming. So when you are when we're doing the computation, we don't assume that for example in the future length set next like 20 gigabyte one set or one, one thing. You don't actually download the 20 gigabyte. It's doing the computation based on the zoom level, based on the reason. So it's maybe only like 20 megabytes. So that's why it makes it really fast. But if you want to do the computation at the native resolution, it's still going to request all the data. So it's going to be slow. And that's when it really matters that your data is next to, uh, uh, close to your server. So if you have the data hosted in Europe, your server is running computation in the US, it's going to have some lag. So there's also something that you have to consider. This is not just a problem like in geospatial, it's pretty much all the data science like web services is running the same bottleneck. But at least if your data support some streaming, then you can stream the data. So you can watch the movie anywhere. But it's going to be some like buffering. If you, <laughs> you, you probably know that like, your internet is not good, it's going to buffering, like just like the same idea. Okay, so that's about the uh, plotting tool. And uh, I'm gonna quickly go through some of these. For example, I can read a laser. Uh, let me quickly show you here. Uh, if you, let me uncheck this one here. Right, so this is the NLCD 2019 again. Uh, this is different from the base map that I showed you earlier. Base map is just a web map services. You cannot get the original data. Just like you cannot download the satellite imagery from Google Earth, okay? It has a bunch of high resolution. You cannot download the original data. But this one here is pointing to the original data source. It's the data in the cloud. So I have the ID here. I can select the land cover. And this is where like it's pretty easy. I want to add a laser, right? So I want to show like uh, what. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so here you can see like different uh, land cover type. You can quickly show it up in here. And pretty nice. So just one line of code, right? I want to add a laser, and so Gmail has a couple of built-in lasers, like free complete uh, uh, commonly used. So you just need to like type NLCD, and that's it. You have the laser. And now, for example, I can just click my uh, let me full screen here a little bit, and then inspector, right? I can zoom to any location. Let's say I'm interested in lane cover here. Click your mouse. It's going to show you the pixel value like lane cover 52. Now you see now like 52 is uh, swap and scrub, right? So just like traditional ArcGIS uh, laser. Uh, so you can do the same thing for cloud data set. You can add a laser. So in that way, your user know like what each color represent uh, to what. And this is local built-in, but you can also customize. So here, right, I can just show you quickly another one. Uh, this looks complicated, but it's actually pretty simple, right? You have a label and you have a color. Again, the color is hex color called RGB. Uh, red, green, and blue. The first two digits are red, green, and blue. And so if you scroll down here, it's the same map, right? And assume that you have a, a custom lane cover map. You want to change the color, you want to change the label, easy. You come back to here, and I say, I don't like open water. I was like water everything. All right? And just again, run this. Oh, this start again. Uh, it's not supposed to be so anyway you get the idea now it's start again i, I have to rewind. one maybe we start sometimes you can take some time to wait but uh, we don't have time so i'm going to skip this and then again it's annoying you have to uh, import this again and then i can come back to the uh, create laser so you'll be this one all right so now you get the idea it's water now it's not open water so basically everything is customizable uh you just need to know what you want and then you tell the cloud to give you what you want so you just need to know how to give uh instructions there are tons of examples um we don't have, have time to go into detail about everyone but so the next one will be like color bar and uh i think i need to show the map in here so i just want to show type the map uh, if the map doesn't come up you need to just type it right so here this for example this is a uh, DM that you have saw, uh, seen earlier. Now you can add a color bar. So it's pretty simple. Map dot add color bar and the visualization parameters. So it's just going to based on whatever visualization parameter that you provide. And then uh, just run this one. Pay attention to the lower right corner. Right? You have this kind of nice color bar, one line of code. So from 0 to 4000, you can customize that. 
uh if you like if you want something vertical i want the next one become vertical you see everything is interactive so basically it has a front end and also the back end so whenever i change something you can go back to change the map in the previous one yeah now it's vertical uh you can also make it transparent but this one looks like it doesn't work maybe just the uh a bug but uh you get the idea so you can have data display you can have a bunch of like tools to assist in the interpretation of your data set so it can be dm it can be lane cover it can be temperature it can be anything so it's very easy to customize all you need is just tell okay what's the minimum what's the maximum uh what's the color map you want uh you will be able to create something like this pretty easily okay so uh we only have maybe half an hour uh so i'm going to call continue and we'll run through very quickly but uh you're welcome to look into more detail about the call uh it's more like giving you some flavor about what what kind of things you can do and you just click the button so you don't have to worry too much about this so if you run this one right this is called split panel map and create a map and then map dot split map you provide a layer for the left uh, a layer for the right and you see you can have something like this uh, this is pretty useful for doing a uh, lane use or whatever change detection you want to see the different data layers right so now you see you can have the uh google satellite map on the on the left and the the uh, raw map on the right again this is just the best map it's not google as engine but the next one i'm going to show you here this one is google as engine so you see here i create a map and then i point to the lane cover data set nlcd 2001 on the left 2019 on the right and then uh you will have to create a map uh the layer so this is basically you are requesting the data layer from google search engine and then put the data layer on the map so now this is 2019 and 2018 it doesn't uh 2001 and 2019 if you zoom out it probably is difficult to see but if you zoom in you should be able to see something like this you know so you can see the differences All right so these are all kind of tools that help you visualize the data so uh, if you just want to compare for example before and after natural disaster you have some data this pretty uh intuitive to use uh, to use only couple lines call a uh, couple lines call and uh, this one gets a bit complicated so this one is called uh, link maps and probably this one doesn't work on google collab so if you move your mouse it doesn't move the other but it's supposed to be uh, there's a bug of the google collab so it's um but if you run it on locally you should be able to see this so for example we have multi-spectral data uh you want to for example this is a uh, sentinel 2 uh, you want to use different combinations so you're teaching your student like what the image look like using different bank combination uh in the past probably in your powerpoint you have some static imagery now you can show something dynamic i can zoom in and zoom out and this is at a global scale so the student can actually interact they can visualize they can look at the things in more detail how the image look like in different location right so pretty powerful and you can have the label uh, everything is customizable and this is like two by two you can have as many rows and many columns as you like so it's just like a image class right so you can create things just to demonstrate uh, the changes uh, next one here is called time series inspector so this one basically uh, help you visualize time series data so uh, it's stuck again i'm sorry so basically when you have for example 10 images you have a lot of images and sometimes you, the split panel map doesn't work because let's say for the nlcd image you have 2001 all the way to 2019 um you have to select you have to card code the year so they can create a split panel map but the uh, time series inspector is uh it's even better because you can just select from a drop down list uh i hate to do this uh it's just happening today you used to work fine on my when i'm doing testing but uh bear with me so i'm going to run this one again and then uh come back to this one here and then run this one again i hope it works okay works fine so now you see right i have a drop down list on the left side i will drop down this on the right and now you can select what year you want to compare right 2001 2019 that's fine so i can zoom in maybe oops uh to the same location for example in uh, las vegas all right so now you can see the changes and they say okay i want to do like the uh 2001 and 2011 so you select uh the layers to change okay so that makes it really easy so there's no really coding 
and this is not just for visualizing NLCD, it can be any time series data, length, say, sentinel, or whatever, as long as you have a collection of time series, all you need is just to pass in, for example, uh, the left collection, you can also be different. So I can have a satellite lens image on the left, I can land cover classification on the right, I have multiple time series, you can just side by side. So this helps you so uh, very flexible. So you just need to pass in the collection and um, the list, how you want to visualize it. Yes? Yes, you can, you can, you can, you can export as an HTML and then you will, when they go to the website, they can visualize that. Oh, uh, no. Uh, but the downside is that is no, uh, if you want to develop some interact, interactive web app for this, uh, I would not recommend you export it in HTML because everything right now we are running is just a temporary layer. It's only valid for 24 hours. So after 24 hours, the layer won't, don't show up. You have to run the call again. So basically, the authentication when we did earlier is just a temporary authentication. The layer is not valid because you have to think about it has 80 petabyte data. We are generating data on the fly. It's only temporary. Once you close the browser and then after 24 hours, the layer will not show up. You have to regenerate because it's not permanent. Otherwise, Google, we have to have thousands of petabytes because you are just reproducing a lot of intermediate steps. Uh, if you really want to have some interactive app, uh, I can show you quickly here. Um, you can also use Gmap. So if you go to the Gmap website and then go to the, uh, here on the left side, stream the uh, web app. And I actually did some of those that allow, allow users to actually uh, use the Google Cloud Computing Power, but everything is rendered on the fly. So you can, for example, go to the time lapse, right? I can generate any set of the time lapse, for example, using lens set. So from here, you can advance all the data set is in the Google SNG data catalog. And then I, all I need is just simply uh, go there. I can draw a rectangle and then I can upload, or I can select, for example, just from the drop down list. Let's say uh, Hong Kong Airport. Oops. So. It's not, it's not working right now. Sometimes if the app gets too popular, sometimes you will crash uh, because essentially you're using your account. So uh, Google things have limitation. Uh, it might not work uh, very well right now, but for example here, lane cover mapping, uh, you get the idea. So for example here, uh, this is an interact app, right? Just like what you're asking, you want to host the data on your uh, state view website, you can do it this way. You can, uh, this is all free. Uh, I have also have all the YouTube video teach you how to do that. So you can, I can show you more example later. So this one here, this is on the fly, requesting the data layer from Google Sending and display the data layer. So this is not like permanent. It's only generated when you, when you access the app. So now you see, right? I, I want to compare the land cover data of the European Space Energy and with the Google Dynamic World Global Land Cover uh, based on Sentinel-2. It's all generated on the fly. So I can zoom in here. Now you see, pretty nice, right? And it's so interactive. Um, so if you want to try it out, you can. So this also allows you to customize, right? I want the data, this is from 2010. I can change to 2021, 2022. You can customize whatever time span you want. You will be able to generate the length cover for you. So this is all uh, near real time. So yeah, you, you can, you can uh, explore it. Um, we don't have time to get into detail, but I just let you know it's a lot of uh, potentials. Yes? Yeah, you can. So whatever data layer available in Google Sendy, you, you, you can do that. So I, I, I have not done it per, like, uh, uh, personally, but as I said, it doesn't matter. As long as it's the data hosting in the Google Sendy Cloud, you can do that. You can compare whatever data you want. Uh, you just need to figure out where's the ID, how you want to visualize that, and then it's going to be presented as a data layer. Then you can compare data uh, side by side. <laughs> okay, so that's about the, uh, uh, I think we need to move a little bit quicker. And so the next one is a so-called the uh, time slider. So this one is also a tool for visualizing time series data. So assume you are trying to visualize um, land cover change, base tension change, and you have like monthly imagery. You, of course, you can add the layer, layer all into the map, like 12 layer, 24 layer, depends on how many you have, but you can also use this one. Uh, it's pretty easy to use, you see? Now you probably understand this, right? The image collection, uh, more this data, I want to filter for 2018. And then, so this is like uh, daily imagery. So we have 30 images in there. 
and I want to select the NDVI. So now basically you have the NDVI for 30 days. And they say, okay, I want to visualize that minimum, maximum, zero, one, and then a pair using NDVI. So you don't have to remember the uh, cat call. And then just say map dog at time slider. And then passing the time series, how you want to visualize that, what's the time interval. And then it's going to show you here at the low right corner here. And I can click it. Uh, it's not very good. It depends on the internet. It's going to basically uh, run through the image collection. So in that way, you can quickly see what the data look like. Um, you can also move your slider so I can move to a specific time. Uh, it's going to show here, so the date, right? So for example, June 19 looked like that. I moved to the ball, uh, to the end, June 28, right? So in that way, you can see the time series. So um, basically, it's just one way to visualize the data. You can use the drop down list, you can use the time slider, yeah, you can use whatever way that you think is, is good. So this helps you visualize uh, tons of data. Um, Otherwise, you have to lock the data layer, just like in ArcGIS, you add all the data layer, you have to check on and off and on and off, it's not very convenient. So this might be something uh, useful. Besides the NLCD, I mean, pretty much any data set, so it's not limited to MODIS, anything, yes? Huh? Yeah, because the, sometimes uh, the internet is going to some lag, so it might be a little bit slower, especially if you're on Google Cloud Collab, it might be slower. But if you run it locally, it should be a little bit more smooth. Uh, again, it's not perfect, uh, but if it is not showing up, that means it's requesting the data layer, so it might take some time. So uh, the reason why I'm faster, because again, Google is sending case the result, so it doesn't really run the computation again, so it might be very quick. But if you're zooming to a location, for example, the nice thing about this is it's interactive. So I can zoom into a location to look it more specifically. And so when you change the zoom level, it's redo the computation. But if you stay in the same region, it's usually become much, much faster because it case the result. Now, earlier it might be one kilometer resolution, uh, 10 kilometer, now it's one meter. So it will run a computation, it might you see, it's a little bit lag in here, but um, this is something that at least we can um, visualize for now, but maybe in the future it'll be more smooth. I uh, catch the result and then can generate animation. Um, I will show you later how you can generate some uh, time lapse. You can also do, for example, uh, Sentinel 2 or Lane Set, whatever, right? Um, I hope you're not stuck again. Uh, okay, good. Uh, now it works. So, for example, here is the Sentinel 2 imagery. I want to filter the imagery at this location. I want the cloud cover with less than 10%. That means you're going to get a bunch of images. And then you can use the same again, time slider. So you can see the changes throughout the year, right? And this is really useful because, again, Lane said, Sentinel, like tons of data sitting in the cloud, but not everyone has the skills actually to visualize the data in the cloud. You have to download the data, you need to pull the data. So now it's just a couple lines of code. You can visualize data for any location around the globe. It doesn't really matter which location. So really, I think Google sending all the cloud computing really changed the things that we've done in the past. In the, in the past, we have to find the data specific location. Now you need to think about location and time doesn't really matter. It's more about your algorithm, your workflow, because data is a global scale. It doesn't matter unless you're starting something very unique. It only occurs in that location. Otherwise, now you have to think about how I generalize, generalize my algorithm. That can be applicable to anywhere. Okay, so uh, pretty change your change your mindset. Uh, it's not like local scale anymore. Everything right now is national scale, global scale. So uh, try it out. So this pretty much about some of the visualization tools I want to show you. Again, uh, there are a lot more examples, but at least to give you an idea how you source the data, how you request the data, how I visualize the data. How I use some of the tools actually to help you uh, look through the time series. And next one I'll show you is called zonal statistics. So if you have used access, you probably know uh, this is very common. That and this is where you get to the computing power. Earlier we are just actually requesting the data. We haven't really done any analysis yet. But now this is really you can do analysis. So for example, here I load the DM, I load the state vector data, and just one simple question that I want to ask you which state in the u.s has the highest average elevation colorado okay then we can try right we can you can look at the map you can probably see that so the white color are going to have high elevation and maybe the next one 
which state has the lowest average elevation? All right? Louisiana, Florida, we can find out. So now you see here, pretty simple, right? Uh, we get access to DM. This is how I'm going to visualize that. We add the data layer. And I also have lens. We'll talk about lens later. So uh, this is just adding the data layer. So now it's just one line of code. So here, gmap talk zonal stats. Okay, I'm input the raster DM. I input the vector data. I want to output it as a CSV. And then I want to do the statistics using mean. So basically, it's going to calculate the mean within its state. And I'm going to run at a scale of one kilometer. So this is where you need to change your mindset. So traditionally, that's the computing. Whatever data that you load in, the resolution is going to use the native resolution to calculate it. But in this case, I don't really have to use the 30 meter resolution. You can do the resampling. So basically, it runs much faster. And you can return, for example, um, return a physical collection. Basically, if you want to return as a vector data, you can. But for now, I'm just going to return as a CSV. See how quick it is. Less than one second. I'm done with analysis. It's output as a CSV. Then I can open here. Refresh. You have the CSV. So time to reveal the answer, right? You can certainly open a CSV. You can read uh, the column here, for example. I can, or maybe I can open the, uh, the CSV here. It might be better, right? Open a CSV. And then you can just, in Excel, you can just do the sorting, right? You can figure out, okay, which state has the average, for example, uh, mean elevation. So it's going to, oh, uh, maybe have a column here on the, on the left side here yeah the mean here All right and you can do the sorting so it quickly goes through i don't actually use excel i don't use a mac computer so i don't know how to sorting but you get the idea so if they quickly go through that 300 200 365 yeah probably oh there's like thousands right i don't remember and then you can see the the, the, the state column in here right uh, we don't have time to look into details so Tell me the answer later once you figure it out, okay? <laughs> so this is how, like, so quick, like, um, one second. If you're running some different analysis, it might take some time because I run it previously, so now it's pretty quick, right? I can do the same thing. Uh, you can do it for multi-spectral band. For example, you want to calculate every spectral signature value for, uh, for the state, right? You can do that as well. So I can run this one. You see, it's done. And then refresh. I get this one. So this is multi-spectral, so you're going to get different bands, right? B1 to B7. So basically, each state, you're going to get an average DM value for your state. And right, it doesn't really, probably doesn't really have any meaning, but you get the idea. You can do multi-bands if you want. So pretty quick. So this is the simplest an um, uh, analysis you can run. Uh, so so zonal statistics. Next one, this one might also be useful. So zonal statistics by group. And let me show you what does this mean. So here, I show you the land LCD, right? Land cover data. And I, for example, I want to figure out which state in the U.S. has the largest agricultural area. Simple, right? You probably, if you want to do agriculture, you might guess. Or you can just look at the map, right? So the brown color is agriculture. So which able state has the largest? But you still have to guess. But if you want definitely answer, this is uh, Google Sending or the GMAP can help you. Again, the same idea, I want to output the CSV, zonal stacks by group, give me the NLCD, give me the state, and do the calculation, I calculate the sum, I want to calculate the total agricultural area. It's not just agriculture, you can do every land cover. So this one basically gives you what's the land cover composition for every state, right? What's the forest, what's the water, what everything, right? So those will be pretty useful. You want to figure out, like, oops. Uh, I think I need to update the function or something. Sometimes it's, uh, uh, let me see here. If it's not working, then I, I'm not, is it working on the collect? So pip, let me see here, pip install. Yeah, because I update it quite frankly, sometimes I break things. Uh, because I have too many like uh, notebooks, I don't have time to test off them. So it might be some issue anyway. Uh, I don't have time to go through that, but you, you get the idea. You can you can calculate the land cover composition for every land cover type, right? You can calculate the sum. You can also calculate the percentage. So for, uh, similarly, I want to ask you a question. What's the, which state in the U.S. in terms of uh, land cover composition, which one has the largest amount of uh, forest compared to this state area? The state land area, 
and land cover is agriculture, right? Ninety percent, ten percent, what whatever, right? You can do the same thing. So you can run the statistics pretty easy. Just one edit call. Yes. Oh, so basically when you are doing the calculation, uh, this is where you can uh, specify something. So um, I really hate that I cannot show you here, but if you run it on Google Collect, it probably works just fine. Uh, so think about here, when it's doing the computation, uh, you need to specify the scale. So earlier I was saying like one, one kilometer, you can probably try 90 or 30, but you will time out your memory will exceed because you are using the native resolution. So Google Earth Engine has an option called base efforts equal to two. That means it's going to run the computation within whatever is available and then give you the best result that's available. But if you really want to run the native resolution, one thing you can do is just to do it state by state. So I'm just going to calculate this one and then smaller area, you're going to get um, a uh, smaller amount of data and then you can get the result. So again, you're doing things at a tech global scale. Uh, it's paid by data. It's resampling. So it's really fast. But if you want, like, I, I want to process real one petabyte. Uh, good luck. Google is not going to allow you to do that. So you just need to do it small piece by small piece. Uh, you're going to run into these issues later when you uh, uh, doing more about this. But anyway, so this is about pretty much about some simple zonal statistics. But uh, there are tons of more things you can do. This just give you a simple example. So the common application, right? I want to do analysis based on vector, based on raster. Uh, you can just doing some simple zonal statistics. But you can design your own algorithm. Uh, it's you can think about it just like a foundation a framework you just use your imagination what do i really want and then you write the algorithm to actually execute and do that and besides for example doing uh vector and raster you can also do uh analysis between two images so this one shows you maybe a dm and then also a lane cover right and i want to say, ask the question for example which lane cover in the us here has the uh, the highest elevation or which lane cover type has the largest fluctuation in terms of elevation right basically the roughness right so think about it those probably simple question but if you really don't want the analysis you can do it for example gmap like this one let me show you here uh the mean um again right you see you get a data frame so this is going to show you the zone basically with the lane cover type uh corresponding to each lane cover here like the value and the right show you the statistic basically the mean elevation within each lane cover type so this is the map at the national scale it's a different lane cover type right uh, uh forest uh crops urban right so now let's review the answer which one has the highest average elevation look at the column on the right which one has the highest number well it looks like number 12. so what's the lane cover type of number 12 uh perennial ice and snow so this one has the highest makes sense right because it probably in the mountains uh mostly the high elevation so it makes sense how about like lowest elevation which lane cover type has a average a lowest average elevation right uh, 11 water pretty close next one 90 what's 90 uh parcel and hair pretty interesting so maybe some flat plane or something like that but it might not always confirm to your common sense but this is things you can run to uh figure out and again it's not like national you can run it at a city scale uh state global now you can really answer questions at a global scale because as long as the data exists all the source code that you wrote stay the same so pretty much only one line you need to change is to change your input data and the workflow remain the same so for example this is i'm doing lane cover using nlcd right you can do that using the european space NC global lane cover you can run the same analysis so this is what i mentioned earlier the more important is to change your mindset from doing local scale more like to generalize how do i address this scientific question using some of the tools and the data set available uh, in here so that's one of those and the next one is about exporting data and uh, this one is not right now. Uh, um, how do I say it? So Google is Engine has time data. It's a pain to export the data. If you're doing like large data, you're trying to export a huge amount of data, it's not going to work well. So 
you you have to think about how, how do you optimize your algorithm run everything in the cloud you're only exporting some summary results if you're explaining the table some numbers it's pretty quick but if you're trying to export one table of data good luck you probably need to wait because everyone is like free resources where everyone is waiting in the queue so when you're downloading data just think about you're watching netflix movie and the, the movie looks nice i want to save it to my computer okay you need to wait uh, there are too many people waiting the line so it takes time to download the data so uh, we don't have time to go into detail but you're welcome to export the data to a local computer to your google drive uh to the google sends account so there are a couple of scenarios if you if you really want to export the data and then you process it ask yes you have to export data to your locally or to your google drive and then you export it but if you are trying to use save the result and then later you want to run the computation in google sends again save the data to your google account in that way the data stay in the cloud is you can still be accessed using the cloud computing think about once the data is outside the cloud it becomes local then you lose the power of utilizing it for cloud computing so there's the differences so try not to export large amount of data from google sending uh it's going to take if you're trying to export global scale it can only take you weeks okay so it's not very fast this is something that you're going to run into issues and gmap has a lot of tool allows you to subdivide the global map into smaller pieces and then I save, uh, export piece by piece. Again, I don't show the example here, but it's certainly possible. Okay. And that's why we only have a couple of minutes, but I just quickly skip through to show you maybe the time lapse. And this is one thing that's uh, pretty popular on the social media. So let me show you here. Let me run this one. So, for example, Lane said has um, kinds of data, right? Uh, 50 years. Uh, but in this case, I'm only using uh, from Lane set five. So, we have tons of data and now i just want to create a simple animation i want to show how the landscape is changing so think about maybe just in in this area i only saw how it's changed during the past four decades right and traditionally if you're trying to do this one uh in a traditional way you go to uhs you try to down identify the region figure out how many images filter out the cloud and then download the images and then to your computer and then trying to put it into a gf animation uh, I, I don't know how long it's going to take you. It's probably hours or days. Uh, now see, 30 seconds. And this is just for the location doesn't matter again. Anywhere. Draw a rectangle. Select the start and the end date. Select the bank combination you want. So basically it's just one line of code. So gmap dot lane set time lapse. Tell me what your ROI it is. Draw a rectangle on the map. Uh, what's the name of the output? It can be GF, it can be MV4. And then, okay, I'm going to start from 1984 uh, and in 2021. And you can also, if you're interested in only a specific season, for example, just the summer, you can change the, this is the month, this is the date. So you can change to June 1st, September 1st, whatever. So you can limit the data to whatever area. And it's going to create a cloud free image based on whatever data that you provide. And then by year, by month, by quarter, you name it. So it's, you can customize it. So here you can change, for example, frequency title. Uh, you can get a scale bar, you can add a title. So um, play with it. Uh, look at whatever area they are interested in starting and you should be able to find a ton, tons of like example. For example, here, I'm going to show you maybe uh, the uh, Las Vegas for example, land cover. So it's the same function. You just need to customize it by location, by date, and then you will be able to generate. So think about here. Now it's sending the command to Google Sending. Run, select all the images create the cloud free and then gmap helps you export the data and then create uh the animation take a look at this not too long right probably 20 seconds you can get for whatever you want and also this is the more limit to the lane set any image collection any time series modis sentinel ghost data set you name it so it's like use your imagination just tell Hey, Google sending or Gmail what you want. So, for example, this one like Hong Kong Airport, right? You can use the app that I showed you earlier. This one actually allows you to generate things on the fly. Uh, it, it might not work right now, but you can track later. So, you can just draw a rectangle and then customize, you will be able to generate. So, users don't have to see your source code. They can generate the result uh, if they want, right? It might take some time if you are trying not to do it for a huge area because you are requesting tons of data. So again, this like Hong Kong airport, you will see like construction baby in the uh, early 2000 something, right? How 
how we change the environment, uh, how long this is very, very easy to use. And you can change the bank combinations, right? So Google Earth also has a time lapse, like at a global scale, but it's just RGB. This one, you can do it for any spectral bank combination, not just RGB. So again, so lane set, uh, mode. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the date here is in the, in the year. So the date, the start year by 1990, So this is the month. Oh, the date, because the code tells the uh, Google Sense to generate yearly imagery. So you're going to have, for example, generate the image from 1990 to 2011. So each image is going to correspond to one year. So I usually map add the label to the imagery. The label is basically correspond. So this is more like no, it's combined basically to the uh, median composite. So basically. Let's assume, for example, uh, uh, 1990, they say it has 30 images. It's not picking the best one, it's combine those 30 images into one to create a cover. I think about it, take a bunch of bad quality images, generate a decent one, just like Apple iPhone, right? You take a bunch of photos and then you generate like the best images for you. So, behind the scenes, it do a lot of computation, and that's why it's like uh, very powerful. I can do, for example, I can do. Um, Modis, for example, uh, NDVI, again, any, any data set, so it's not limited to just length set, Modis, AD data, data, as long as you have a time series, you can do it like this, okay? This one is pretty interesting, right? Uh, see how the Earth is breathing just like human, like right? changing throughout the season, the dynamics. You probably won't be able to see that you're just breathing one time period, but now I'm showing you like 30 years of, 20, 30 years of long-term average. So you see how the vegetation is throughout the season, right? Anyone can understand this. But if just showing one time snap, uh, people have hard to imagine like what the landscape looks like. So now you have a cross spectrum resolution from kilometers to uh, length set 30 meters to 17 or 10 meters to even like one meter name imagery. So you have a bunch of data that you can showcase. Like, and this is really minimum coding, like right? it's basically just one line of code. And then I say, uh, provide the region. You can draw a rectangle on the map and then just provide the ROI, the date, the satellite. So there are a bunch of parameters that allows you to customize. Also, you can overlay a country boundary. So in this case, you see, you have the country boundary. So you have the background. You can add a uh, US state, whatever. Depends on region. So a lot of data layer you can build on top of the data layer. Okay, so I think we are almost there. I'm last, last one to reach, uh, maybe the last five minutes just to show you for example, this is more like real applications, right? So we have tons of data. You can run algorithm. You can classify imagery. You can you can design a beautiful algorithm, and um, then you can start running analysis. So the I'm just going to run all of them so that uh, you can see the result. Uh, I don't have have time to go into the details. So this one essentially doing uh, surface water changes. So think about here. Uh, let's say I, I I'm interested in doing surface water mapping, right? And you can do it at a global scale if you want. I'm just right now zooming at this location. Okay, this is the prairie poho region. So I study wetlands, surface water, and I want to see how the water actually is changing because water is very dynamic. It's not always 100%, right? So today it might be identified as water. Uh, next day it might dry out. So it's basically very dynamic. And so in GMAP, just one line of code, I can show you, for example, just like this one, surface water accounts, right? So you can see the changes, for example, uh, there's some permanent water, there's some temporary water, seasonal water. So you can see the spectrum within this area. How many pixels are 100% always detected as water in the JRC, the European uh, 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 Resource Commission? Like the data set is generated based on a land set of like four decades of data. Now you have access to the data product they provide. Then you can, you can just run analysis on that. Uh, of course, you can produce the data by yourself. You can you can access all the lens data, you can run the classification, whatever, surface water. You join the output, now you can run analysis. So this just shows you, for example, surface water. And then you can, uh, let me show you this one here a little bit more, right? So this one shows you 454 images. So basically, the JRC has monthly water data set, right? Every month you get one image. And every month you get the area, the total area, surface water area, right? It's going to change throughout the, the season. And so if you do climate change, you do anything, you're trying to say, okay, okay, the air is drying out, okay, 
can you show me the proof why it's drying out okay i run the analysis i calculate the area of every month it's showing it's totally it is drying out then you can see that okay so do you see uh, this again a little bit more complicated but just want to show you the result for example here right since 1984 every month you have a surface water extent i can calculate the area and you can show you the changes right so in this area apparently it's getting wetter it's not getting drier right and you also see some gaps in here because it's in the north so the winter season is frozen there's no water so you see some gaps in here and if you want you can customize i can change for example i only want to analyze the data from june to september then you can limit the data now you have more like continuous so now you can see the area for example you can hover a mouse you're going to see the area so starting from 1984 all the way to uh, 2021 and this is you can see the total area how it is changing right and again uh, this if you're trying to do the locally desktop computing it's going to take you an hour and you can do it at a global scale if you want i'm just showing you this area because it's very dynamic very interesting but i can do it from uh, sub june to september i can calculate the mean uh, by month you can also do it by year by quarter basically you can customize it i'm just showing you by month and so the the area is in a uh, hectare but i can do the mean i can do the max something like that so you can easily customize so you can easily figure out oh you are doing agriculture i want to figure out okay is the agriculture area is it shrinking is it expanding what is happening during the past four decades if you already have the data or you can use some existing data or you can classify you can do it by yourself and you can run the analysis and the workflow remain the same so basically this is for water but you can do it for wetland for any other land cover data type because right now we have more and more time series land cover data you can just use whatever they provide and they can run a quick analysis if it is not perfect fine go ahead and develop your own algorithm run the analysis and then you can easily change for this to whatever land cover you want to study so yeah so that's pretty much i want to show you just a quick walkthrough and if you have the opportunity to run calls now you probably know like okay now you can claim okay i can do cloud computing it's like simple it's not difficult at all now i can watch movies using netflix and maybe next year i mean if there's opportunity there's a need i can present plenty plenty the computer or aws just next year teach you how to watch movie using amazon prime or, or whatever it comes out so technology is changing but I think this is the mindset, the concept. So now you get an idea how to access the data, how you visualize the data, uh, how you analyze the data. And there are a lot more resources on the uh, the GMA website and also the book. Uh, you're welcome to try it out. And I provide a tons of resources, uh, examples. So there is just maybe 5% of the tutorial they provide and also YouTube video. Uh, if you have any suggestions, if you run into any issues. So last one I show you is that uh, if you're really into that and then if you want to ask questions, I would recommend uh, that this is the way to, oops. So you can go to the gmap, gemap.org. And so if you click the upper right corner here to go to the GitHub webpage. And there's a discussion board here and also the issue. So discussion basically means, okay, I want to do this. How can I do this? Uh, you're welcome to just create an account and then you can answer questions from here. And... Um, Usually you get answered within 24 hours. Um, uh, uh, I usually answer those uh, when I'm sleeping. So I know it's just a joke. <laughs> but uh, you will get answered pretty quickly. And if you send me email, sometimes I'll get tons of emails. So I don't have time to look into it right now. But it's always going to stay there on record. So if it's answered, you get a straight mark. So search the questions first. If it's not being asked, ask a question. But if you find any bugs or you want to see something like official request, submit in here. And I will try my best to implement and so that we can improve. And yeah, that's all I have. And hope you learn something new and you find it useful and you can try it out. And if you want to any questions, let me know. I'm more than happy to uh, give you more resources. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah. And I'm going to.